See, See one, one would think, think the close, close grip curl, curl is, is pretty, pretty easy. easy. No. I don't think so. <laughs> right ahead of me here is the close grip curl. And this spider coming right at me. But anyways, not the one of the main ways to succeed in the close grip curl is how we approach the curl. But we have to we have to sort of sneak up on it. If um, you heard the expression, um, you have to trick your muscles, sort of think of it in the fact of we're tricking the exercise. The exercise is not gonna see us coming from a mile away. And so we have to, oh man, that, that spider, it's getting close. Yep, it's, it's coming at me. Number number one rule, number one, number one rule when you're curling anything is to know where the weight lies. If you know where the weight lies, it, it's like golf, you know? Play it where it lies. The reason why you play it where it lies is because if you picked it up, you're just doing the game of golf a disfavor because you're playing by your rules. This, these are the rules of the weight. To know location. Location is key. Location equals matter on top of subject displacement within a muscle group. Yeah. Location is dumb. If you know where you're gonna lift the weight, even if it's not a physical location, physical location, you're still gonna you're still gonna win in the gym. Because if you lift somewhere you're not, somewhere you're not, and then you're in somewhere else, you're in that space in time, but you're physically you're you're physically there, but mentally somewhere else in time. You're gonna win. You're gonna win. You're gonna win. See, like with any good exercise, we have to know where the boundaries are. And to figure out where the boundaries are, we have to know where to start. And so I encourage you, to, um, to, to grab something other than a weight in the gym and, and try the workout itself. Maybe um, go into your local janitor's closet and pick up a, one of these uh, brooms as well. Um, they help a lot. To do a close grip curl, we're all the way in the middle. We are pushing our biceps closer in and activating that inner that inner bicep here, we're activating, we're activating that right there. I have a theory. What if, what if we cross the boundary, right? Crossing the boundary here, we could do it either arm. Either arm could be crossed to reach the boundary that we're gonna cross here, maybe, and stuff. So if I cross the boundary itself, what will happen to me? Most importantly, what will happen to my arm? And see, if we cross too much, it's, it's kind of, we, we get the same motion, but, uh, but it, it's kind of just weird. It feels kind of weird. So, but that's with an overhand grip. I, I was testing your skills of barbelling. Um, so with an unhand grip, Right, with a, the supination of a grip. If we cross the boundary here, now it's a little hard to cross with a, with a supinated grip, right? But if we cross the supinated grip, where, where does that put us, right? This puts us right here. And this, this burns, 
not really with this broom itself, but with the knowledge of weight, holding weight, it burns. Right, I, I can definitely feel that. And if, if you go too far, like we said, we're gonna hit the brachialis, but if we physically contort our, our body, right, I think that might give us a fighting chance to, to keep a short head in the game. So if we cross, cross the line here, right, and turn our body, but not turning our arms because our arms have to stay put. So if we turn our body like that, I think that does put us, put us somewhere, put us somewhere in a good, I'm already feeling that there. Man, that's, that's actually, I can feel something. Definitely in the short head. Definitely right there in the short head. Definitely right there. I can definitely feel it doing this. It's crazy what science brings us to.